Speaking of Marvin Harrison, I bet him today six to one to win Rookie of the Year. I don't think that's crazy. Caleb Williams yeah. is two to one, and like we talked about, like I love Caleb Williams. I don't think a number one pick, a number one pick at quarterback, has ever been put in a better situation with an improved offensive line and mm-hmm. all those weapons, man. But six to one for Marvin Harrison, who I think is the best wide receiver prospect in like the last decade. Maybe not the best wide receiver. He might never never be better than Justin Jefferson. But like Justin Jefferson, nobody was really even talking about him on draft night. Uh, Jamar Chase was a top five pick, so we knew he was going to be awesome. But I mean, Marvin Harrison at six to one. I just really like that price. If Kyler stays healthy, yeah, and you have a a better, I, I don't know. I don't really like Arizona's offensive line. That's why Kyler's always running for his life. But he's going to be the number one wide receiver, and I don't even know who's going to come close to targets now without Hollywood Brown. He could catch a hundred balls as a rookie. He catches everything across the middle. Uh, I think that's a really good bet. And I also kind of like Arizona plus 350 to make the playoffs. When we were talking with Eric Eager on Friday night, he threw that out there. Got me thinking. Probably not going to happen, but I think there's going to be injury regression for San Francisco. I worry about that offensive line and really the defense. Like the secondary didn't really improve either. Um, And then, yeah, I like the Rams, but if Matthew Stafford's not healthy, they're screwed. So I, I kind of like but the I, with Cardinals. Most, with most teams in the NFL, if their quarterback goes down, oh, that's yeah, it yeah, for their absolutely. season. The 49ers but, are one of the only teams that have been able to like overcome that multiple times. Yeah, I bet the Niners plus 350 to miss the playoffs, and I bet the Cards plus 350 to make the playoffs. They don't even got to win the division. They just got to win 9, 10 games. Last time they were fully healthy, they were 8-0 to start the season, 7-0. and And then they got – well, Kyler got hurt. They lost to Green Bay. It was a little bit different of a team, but – I think sometimes we sleep on Kyler when he's healthy. I don't think he's winning the Super Bowl, but I think he could win you 9-10 well, games. We watched, and that gets you in the playoffs we in a week NFC. So what do you think about Philadelphia in the NFC East? I don't really like this offseason for Dallas. You have the Commanders, who are probably a couple years away still, and then you got the Giants with Daniel Jones as their starting quarterback. And yet they're still plus 125 to win the division. I love the draft. They get Quinion Mitchell, and they get Cooper DeGene. What do you think about Philly? You oh, can't read my handwriting, but... And, <laughs> these are the and, futures. These are the futures that I played today, and, and yeah. Eagles plus one twenty-five to win the division is on there. You can't see it, and no one can read my my chickens almost cussed. my chicken scratch uh, <laughs> handwriting anyway. But yeah. no, I'm totally with you. A new team wins it every year, right? So there's that. Like, yeah. have they done anything great? No, but they survived the toxicity of last year. Do I think they should have just hired Bill Belichick? I do. They thought about it. You know, yeah. the owner didn't want to deal with it, but like. In that division, can they hold it together enough? Like, can some of the kids they've drafted on defense, could Geo, could they get that core of Georgia Bulldogs to come together? Uh, yeah, for plus money, like, I can't make the case for anybody else in that division. Like, I really can't. So, yes, I'm with you. You know, it shouldn't surprise anyone, Jason, that obviously now there's a lot of hype around the Bears given the draft they've had, given the offseason that, that they've had and how aggressive they've been. But if – uh, these can expand. These can get crazy. We know how that goes. What, what's like more of a realistic expectation for this Bears team coming off of a seven-win season last year? Well, I, I I know that their win total right now is set at eight and a half. Mm-hmm. So the way I'm playing that is I'm hoping that everybody and their mom convinces themselves that they're this year's version of the Houston Texans. Right? Like they're gonna like they're gonna have this great draft and they're gonna draft a rookie quarterback and. The defense is already kind of coming together a little bit, and away we go. And so I'm hoping that total gets up, and then I'll go under. Um, I I don't really want to play a future unless it's for plus money. Like, if I'm letting them hold my money for six months, I I want to at least be a little bit excited about what I'm getting back. And so I I can't – I couldn't play it over. If you made me take it right now, I'd go under. But really, I I just kind of want to watch, right? Because, like, they'll be – they've been so desperate for a winner there for so long. Like – People are going to, every time he makes a pass in OTAs, it's going to be the lead story on the six o'clock news. Like, oh my God, we've got our savior and salvation. Like, it's finally here. We're we're in the real NFL. We have our first quarterback since Sid Luckman, whatever. So I, I just want that hype train to go crazy. And then I'll wait till later in the summer and I'll fade it then. You know, you have to replace both safeties, your best cover corner, and Trey White, who hasn't really been healthy in three years. I do really like the Cole Bishop pickup because I'm a huge uh, Utah college football fan. What do you think about the defense? Is that your concern, especially with Von Miller not even having a sack last season? No. If there's one thing I'll never be concerned about with the Buffalo Bills of Sean McDermott, it's the head coach's defense. This guy can coach defense. He's the Andy Reid of coaching defense. I mean, this guy, look at the numbers last year. They were dis- they were decimated on defense with injuries everywhere, and they were still one of the better defenses in the league. Now, yep, they gave up some late leads. I know that while they're going through some growing pains. But listen, guys, 
you're getting Matt Milano and Terrell Bernard back together. Matt Milano missed pretty much all of last season. Um, Daquan Jones missed a lot of last season. He's coming back. And Tredavious White wasn't a factor. Um, he did play the first four games, but after that, Rasul Douglas comes in. He was sensational. And, um, you know, on the other side is Christian Benford. I don't think people realize how good of a year he had. At safety, there is definitely a conversation about those guys have been here for seven years. They've been excellent. There's no doubt. If there's one area where you're going to have some concern, it's going to be safety. Maybe pass rush as well. I guess, you know, that's definitely true. They're expecting Von Miller to be better because he's, you know, he'll be more than a full year recovered. But at safety, they went out, they signed Taylor Rapp, they they signed Mike Edwards, and they did draft, uh, draft Cole Bishop. That's going to be an area. But, I, I mean, look at the history at the DBs since Sean McDermott's been here with Leslie Frazier and other people. It's just it's just an area of strength. No matter who's back there, they, they just never seem to get beat that way. Maybe out for a while. Mm-hmm. It looked like I was reading on Twitter, you know, Porzingis knows his body really well. He's tweaked that calf before. And the fact that he kind of knew immediately means that most likely the the East is wide open, guys. <laughs> Knicks, Knicks. Now, don't who you, they don't want? you, Knicks. don't you do this Knicks. to me, Tristan? You're gonna get me too Knicks. excited. No, no, now, I'm not. I'm who not buying you, into Knicks. it. Who else would you bet in the East, though? Uh, they'd probably be the only ones. You know, honestly, nobody. they would be the only ones. I, I mean. Uh, unless by some miracle Milwaukee wins the series, Giannis comes no. back, and that no. again, I'm trying to come up with something. I don't know up. what else. Uh, the Heat? No, I'm just kidding. Obviously, no. They're packed um, up in a suitcase. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, not Sixers. No, no, not. no, no. How about those Indiana Pacers no, guys? No, no, Nothing no, no. to lose. Getting out there and knocking down the <laughs> they, Giants. They don't in the play East. any defense. No, they don't. They're just they they're don't. lucky enough that they could play in a series where the I mean, like the Bucks can't get stops, and now they can't score yeah. either. So. That's a bad matchup. No, it feels like Knicks and Celtics are on a collision course for the Celtics to eventually win that series. I'll at least I... take Knicks plus two and a half, though. Yeah, I like that could be a seven game series. The Knicks because the Knicks are so physical, and the one thing that you do get for the most part, it hasn't been perfect. You get a lot more consistency from players that you expect to get that consistency from with the Knicks, right? Indeed. Even if Josh Hart's not scoring, you know you're getting 17 rebounds, and he's going to be a plus 10 like last game. Now, the first couple of games, I get it. Jalen Brunson shot 39%, but now he's come back and been a monster the last two. So there's just there's something different about the Knicks, their culture, the mindset, the players, everything out there versus it's kind of a roller coaster with Boston. So that's the one. Oh, wow advantage that the Knicks could have in that series where they could maybe steal a game in Boston is where Jason Tatum's sleeping kind of like he is tonight. He's five of twelve and has or sorry, four of thirteen and has sixteen points. That that's the type of situation I think where the Knicks could steal a game or two and maybe force it to go seven. Yeah, they gotta ugly it up a little bit. And they I think do. that they're yeah. able to do that, you know? Like they're the gritty team that could that could get under Boston skin if Porzingis isn't fully healthy. Because I was gonna play his prop. What if he just doesn't play, what if he doesn't or if he play doesn't again? play at all, I might actually maybe take a shot with the Knicks. Hedge out of my Boston mm-hmm. futures. Because they don't have anybody. That's the thing. Is like you look at the Boston Celtics, and we don't really talk about it a lot, but they don't have a backup big. Al Horford's mm-hmm. not going to get it done, folks. So you have Isaiah Hartenstein going up against Al Horford. Oh, baby. Then you got Precious Achuya playing small ball five. What you about to do? Yeah, that'll be a tough series. Al I think Horford's I, not ready for 40 minutes a night? I think that series could go seven. I don't know what else I just they would, don't they'd know have to could. go small. Yeah. Like, I don't know what else they would even do there. Boston? Yeah, yeah. Boston would have to just go small. It has to They'd be have to call Al Time Lord and be like, we're sorry, I, baby. Right. <laughs> I mean, are they putting Xavier Tillman out there at that point? Maybe. Yeah, probably. I think they probably would have to. Xavier then, yeah. Tillman and Luke Cornett are getting oh minutes. Oh, my God. Yeah. Luke Cornett, former Nick. Yeah. Revenge series for split, Luke Cornett. You'd probably have to split like 10 or 11 minutes between those guys. Yeah. That's brutal. Yeah. It's not, uh, you get crushed in those minutes. Kind of like the non Jokic minutes for a while there in Denver. Yeah. 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 I mean, well, listen, non-Jokic minutes you talk about for a while, but also non-Joel Embiid minutes, even for his struggles in the fourth oh. quarter. Like, So a lot of these teams have, you know, you and your star's not out there. You're not going to necessarily be the same team. I think that's what helps the Knicks at least a little bit is you have other guys. You know, they're like Jalen Brunson is the motor of that team and the star and all that, but like it's not, you know what I mean? It's not the same as like Embiid or Jokic. It's not the same feel in terms no. of the way that he carries them. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But I don't know, man. Like Boston, they just can't have nice things, it turns I know, out. but. 